What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pass Money. You know who we are. Um, and then today we're just bringing you, you know, just in the life, you know, in the life of what it's like to search for this passive income. Like uh, Cody Sanchez said, you know, passive income is not 100 percent passive. And what she meant by that was to get that passive income to start flowing and dripping into your bank account, you have to actively do things on the on the foregrounds when you first acquire an asset, no matter if it's a business, no matter if you if you even research in stocks and things like that. You have to actively spend your time to do it. And then once you get everything in process, you can, you know, then you can start receiving that passive drip, especially if you hand it off to a property manager or what have you. Uh, but today in this video, we're gonna talk about Alex. Alex is on week two or week three, I don't know, he'll update us on that, on the property duplex that he just bought in Georgia, week two. Uh, so duplex that he bought, just bought in Georgia, he's going to do a full rehab of the of a unit in there. And we're just going to go through the before, during, and afters and see what Alex has learned and what he's had to go through in this process. So Alex, just starting off, uh, let's talk about, the, let's talk about the, the deal so far. Just not about the, you know, we already know the comps, the costs, and all that. But going into this deal, like closing time come, you close on the deal. And then what was your next steps right after that? As soon as we closed on it, so we closed on a Wednesday. That Friday, they headed up to start doing work. So for those that don't know, I use the same group of guys for all repairs and remodels and stuff unless it's something that's like last minute like the tenant needs it fixed right now you know i'm not gonna wait on them but i trust these guys they do great work so for any like you know projects like this i always use the same guys now i have to say though so they did jump into it immediately that was right after closing Fr that friday was crazy because as they're headed up there's about, so there's about $1,500 worth of like materials in their trailer and they have a tire blowout. And so they're on I-75. So I'll just be honest. One of them is, uh, he, he, uh, well, he, he's now moved to a different state actually, but one of the guys was an illegal immigrant, as we've talked about, you know, how Florida is getting harder on them. And so with the tire blowout, I'm like, oh, that's not good, you know, because cops will pull over and try to help out. So we had to leave the trailer, drive off to a Walmart, get spares, come back. It was it was crazy. And then they finally got there at like two in the morning because the the the, uh, the duplex is in Georgia. Right. So so once you so once you got. So once they got up there, so what was your plan when you seen the when you closed on the property, you seen the befores, of course, through your walkthrough and all that. What was your plan? What was your plan for just as far as the demo what, or as far as the upgrade? Where was where was it at when you seen it to where it was at? And then if you got pictures, you know, you could share those also. Yeah, I can put up some pictures up here. So mm -hmm. the, the plan was and showing I'll show the pictures up here, but. The outside was hideous. I mean, it was green. I've never seen like a green house. So the plan was obviously paint the outside. On the inside, it the the unit needed a lot of work. But the thing with projects, and I'm, I'm sure you have a lot of experience with this, is like as you're doing rehab and stuff, more problems come up than expected. Like you have a vision of what you want to do. And then as you're going through that process, you realize, oh, this is going to delay this and that. So the plan for the inside was replace the flooring, remodel the whole bathroom, paint the outside, paint the inside, replace all the doors inside and out. The cabinets were like green and they're old style cabinets. And I know we talked about it. In order to just save time and just get it done, I figured I'm just going to paint the cabinets white, get new handles, new hardware, and then deep clean them, and then change the faucet. So the cabinets themselves are going to be old style, and then they're just going to have like touch-ups to make it look a little bit more modern. And then on the next time that we have to turn it over, we can go ahead and just get new cabinets. Right. 
So now uh, you said you spoke about how other things came about or other problems come after you start peeling back the layers of what you're trying to get rid of. So what uh, headaches or what headwinds did you run into while you was doing your remodel? So as we talked about in the last video, Kirby was up there. And as he's up there, <laughs> the main guy that handles it, handles these projects, calls me and says, hey, my guy just fell off a ladder. And I, I guess you were, <laughs> you, <laughs> I guess Kirby was there at the same time. <laughs> And you're FaceTiming me and you're like, nah, man, get up, get back to work. <laughs> and, I, you know, I'm thinking like, oh, geez, like, don't tell me, like, this guy broke his back or something like that. It's horrible. Because then, I mean, for one, I'm like, gosh, now I'm going to be delayed. But, like, also, too, I'm like, oh, that sucks, you know. <laughs> I, was but, only, I was only thinking about the delay. That's the, only thing yeah, thinking no, about. that's the first thing I'm thinking about. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that sucks. Broke your back. Not good. But no, nah, the guy just fell, uh, landed okay, so he just hurt himself, but he's good. But that that came up. That was just like, I'm like, what in the world? And But uh, work-wise, like project-wise, mm. as they're pulling up the floor, so it was laminate floor throughout the whole place. As they're pulling up the floor, there's carpet underneath the laminate. And then they rip up the right. carpet and then there's vinyl and then they rip up the vinyl and there's more vinyl. So there's like four layers of flooring and just to rip up all that took them like all day. And so that was one of the biggest delays that and then the bathroom, as I mentioned in the previous video was. So as you put, you know, you put like mortar on the wall or whatever and then you put the glue and then you put the tile so they had like a huge like like a thick layer of cement on that on the wall and then the tile only went up halfway didn't cover like the whole wall as it should be for a shower so they had to drill off that whole layer and so that also took time too because as they're you know like ripping apart trying to demo this stuff it takes a lot of takes a lot of just time just to get rid of all that stuff but those are those are the biggest setbacks on on this project and then so with your with the flooring let's go to the flooring first and then we'll come back to the shower with the flooring first when you peel it back when you pull a lemon back then you see carpet i don't know how you can lay lemon on top of carpet but i guess that's the new way but then so you pull the carpet back then it's more lemony so i'm, I'm figuring you put the lvp down uh, to replace what was already there, correct? Yes, the it, it's like that laminate style, but it's rubber. Yeah, it's it, it looks yeah, like yeah, 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 LVP. It, yeah, 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 the yeah. LVP. Okay, so so the question I have with all those different layers was the floor still level all the way across after you peel back the layers, or did you have to like add two by four to level it across? How did how oh, did you did, tackle that? It was still leveled. I'm assuming because the the foundation is concrete. But yeah, once they pulled back everything, everything was flat and leveled, so we were good there. Okay, so it wasn't flat and level when before beforehand. No, it, it wasn't flat and leveled beforehand because the carpet, you know, moves and stuff, and it just right, right. lifted up all the. And I remember walking the unit, and it, it felt kind of like squishy. I don't know, it was kind of weird. But right, it's, right. It's... Yeah, and then so you went LVP all the way through the whole. The whole unit. Yep. Whole okay. Unit. So now moving on. Now moving on to the bathroom. Um, the bathroom. You, I believe, because I was there. You took out the. You took out the tub and you replaced it with the new tub. Correct. Yes. Replaced with a new tub, and then you had to. I don't even know what jackhammer, hammer all that concrete off to level it out. I mean, that was a madhouse. And then, of course, because you're in Florida, and then that project's going on, trying to, you know. Get the supplies, dump the dump all this extra stuff. I know that probably was a headache. Also, trying to figure all that stuff out. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was the figuring out how to dump it. That was the problem we dealt with today. So it wasn't then, but luckily the guys have a trailer, so they were just loading up the trailer full of trash. But yeah, the bathroom fully remodeled. I mean, ripped up all the floor, ripped out the the tub the sink the toilet 
then next you know the mirror the mirror and the light above those are smaller things but we're going to do that on the following weekend but you know obviously we have to rip up the floor to put the new floor first so then you can put everything on top of it and currently as of today the toilet's in there the tub is in there the shower wall is all tiled in the valve the all the all new valves shower heads everything like that and that was the other thing too is replacing the valve because the walls throughout the whole duplex there's no drywall it's all concrete and so they had to break through all this concrete and i have to be honest luckily that these guys i mean from other countries doing work in other countries you know they work on concrete homes so i wonder how that would have went for an american contractor but they they knew what they were doing well i'll tell you how to went for an american contract they was charged about a couple about twenty thousand dollars more to start jackhammering everything all around <laughs> messing up stuff to create more problems that's probably what yeah. would happen yeah. so so now fast forward now we we weekend two and you say you're about 90 percent done correct right yeah so what what is the outstanding things that you got to tackle for i believe next week you're going to get that done yeah so the biggest thing really is putting in the vanity for the bathroom and that is yeah that is the biggest thing so every just about everything is done so it's just putting in the vanity and then all the small details is like so we have to put another layer of paint on the cabinets so it doesn't look all sloppy and then put the handles on the cabinets put put in the new faucet uh the little details the light fixture in the mirror new new fixture and mirror in the bathroom mm. some paint touch-ups and deep cleaning just a lot of cleaning so really right. not that much that's right. left just little stuff right there. yeah and and people might be wondering like well why can't you just get it done tomorrow like alex was saying that he's out of state and then his team that he uses out of state also and, and he already you know for plan for this he knew that most of the work will get done on the weekends unlike most people they can't get no work done on the weekends alex is strictly done on the weekends but he for thought and planned for this but that's the reason why i mean it's all about building a team and the team you trust i mean he could he can go hire some uh random people that's in the local area and then they don't complete the job like he wanted done and then he's paying out the wazoo for them and then if he got to bring in the team that he trusts to redo it then that's just more money to come out of it so sometimes it's more it's, it's better to take a longer time just to make sure it's done right the first time instead of you know trying to get it done quick to you know just appease a quick timeline but then you turn around and there's more issues more issues more issues and and for alex part I do the same thing on most of the properties that I have here in Florida. I use the same team uh, because it's just people I trust. I mean, I don't want to have to go through and somebody fix something and it got to be done again. I ran into that problem a couple of times, especially down there in the hurricane uh, area in Lee County. So they're just giving people an understanding of, you know, the process of what goes on. So as soon as you close on the property, everybody think close on the property. Oh, it's it's good. I'm good. I'm passive money. No, you got to start doing the active part of it. Of everything Alex talked about, turning the property, getting it up to snuff, bringing it up up to date, and things like that. But then after that's done, he can pass it over to a property manager. Then, or he can do it himself. If he's going to do it himself, then that's more active work you got to do to you know acquire the tenant background check, credit check, things like that, making sure he has a quality tenant in there. And then that after those steps are done and then, you know, the the uh, potential tenant or tenant comes in, start paying rent on a regular basis. That's when it becomes passive. But before then, you have to do the active work before you get to that passive stage. So to Cody Sanchez, uh, thanks for keep pointing that out, that passive income is not 100 percent passive starting out. You actually got to do active work to make it happen. But with all that being said, Alex, we'll see you in the next video. And everybody that's looking, please comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. See you guys.